One of the things we confessed in that, as we confessed our faith in the Holy Spirit, one of the works that God does is gather the Holy Christian Church. And maybe you've heard this, maybe you've said this, but you've heard the phrase, I'm okay with Jesus, I just don't like the church. Right? Because the church is full of sinful human beings. And this is the amazing thing about the church. Even though it's full of sinful human beings, the Holy Spirit still works through it to bring the grace of God. And what we're going to hear about in our lesson, it's from Acts chapter 15, is that the church was always full of sinful human beings who had disagreements. But in this passage, let's see what we can learn from how the Holy Spirit works through sinners to bring the message of Jesus. We'll hear about that in our video this morning. Paul and Barnabas had been sharing the gospel with many people, including Gentiles. But some people in the church began to teach that the Gentiles could not be saved unless they first followed some of the same rules the Jews followed. Paul and Barnabas disagreed, and the church leaders decided to meet in Jerusalem to talk about whether or not the Gentiles needed to obey the law of Moses. After a long discussion, Peter stood up and said to the group, Brothers and sisters, God chose me to tell the good news to the Gentiles. They heard the good news and they believed. God accepted them and gave them the Holy Spirit, just as he did for us. Why are you trying to make them earn salvation? We know that we cannot obey God's laws perfectly. No, we believe that the Jews and Gentiles are saved in the same way, by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Everyone in the group was quiet as Paul and Barnabas told them about all the things God had done through them when they were with the Gentiles. Then another apostle, James, spoke up. He pointed out that the words of the prophets showed that God wanted to save both Jews and Gentiles. I think we should not cause trouble for the Gentiles who have trusted in Jesus. Instead, let's write them a letter telling them the things they should not do, said James. So the church leaders wrote a letter to the Gentile believers explaining some things they should not do now that they were believers. The leaders chose Judas, who also went by the name Barsabas and Silas to go to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas to deliver the letter. The believers in Antioch were encouraged by the letter. Judas and Silas stayed with them for a while and then they went home. Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch where they taught believers and told other people the good news about Jesus. The church leaders met in Jerusalem to answer a tough question. Can a person be saved by faith alone or is something more needed? The early church agreed that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, He alone is all we need to be saved. So I wonder, have you ever been to a party where you kind of felt out of place? Okay, a few of us. I, I, I've been to a few of these where it's like a theme party and you didn't really know that everybody was actually going to dress up as like at the Star Wars party, everybody was a character from the Star Wars show, and you dressed kind of like this. And you show up at the party, and you feel like you stick out like a sore thumb. Now, I think that gives us a little bit of an idea of how the Gentiles felt coming into the Christian church. Because they were those who were outside of the Jewish community. And the Jewish community had these external practices that they did that made them kind of all on the same page. On the outside, their lives looked similar. But the Gentile believers didn't have that. And that's really the issue that the church is addressing is how, how do they belong here with us? And one of the solutions they came up to, this was the Pharisees, this was their group, their solution was that they have to keep all of the law and then they'll look the same as us. It was basically to tell that person who showed up to the party and wasn't dressed like the rest of us, just go home, find a costume, put it on, and then you can come back. Which really didn't make those, wouldn't have made those people feel like they belong with Jesus. And you see, this is what Peter points out to us. Is he points out that this really isn't consistent because just, like the, just because this person is dressed like Chewbacca doesn't mean that anybody thinks that Jeremy actually is Chewbacca, right? We can put the costume on, we can look like the perfect people, 
but we will never keep the law perfectly. This is what Peter tells them in 15 verse 10 as he stands up in the middle of the assembly as he says, we haven't kept the law. How can we expect these people who don't know the law to all of a sudden step in and keep the law perfectly? You see, for the Pharisees, there was a certain order. You had to believe, and then you had to behave appropriately. And if you behaved appropriately, you could finally belong. But Peter points out that the one thing we all have in common is that we really need grace. That's what makes us belong in the Christian church, is our need for grace. And that's one of the reasons we actually started doing this service, is to give people a place where they they felt like they belonged. Because maybe you've gone up against that in your life before, where, where you have children who are acting their age, which might be anywhere, you know, between the ages of one and eight, and you get those looks in the church and it feels like, it feels like you, you don't belong in that place. But the amazing thing, the amazing grace of the fact that we do belong in this place is that what we need in those situations, what we need really in every situation of life, whether it's my 250th time worshiping in this place or my first time ever hearing about Jesus, we all need grace. That's what ties us together. That's what makes us belong in Jesus' church, is that I need Him. First, we belong. That's what Peter said. That's the decision that the church came to, is that before we behave perfectly, we belong. And then he starts talking about We belong, actually, so that we could believe in what God is doing. This is what he says in the very next verse. He goes on to say, But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. You see, that we are on this common ground of needing grace, and then we also receive this grace. We believe in Jesus and receive his grace poured into our lives. You see, the law effectively prepares us for the gospel. It shows us that we fall short. It shows us that all of us need grace. But what brings us this salvation is the gospel. Okay, everybody say those words with me. That's a really important word to know. So we're going to say gospel on the count of three. One, two, three, gospel. The word gospel just means good news. And it points us away from what we do and away from ourselves so that I don't belong here because I'm dressed the right way, but I belong here because of what Jesus has actually done for me. It reminds me that what makes me in the community fully is outside of myself, that Jesus has actually died for me, that he rose from the dead and he's coming back again. And I believe this and receive this grace. Which is why at the beginning of our service, every single week, we start by recognizing we're all in the same place. We all need God's grace. And then I get to stand in the place of Jesus. I get to do what he commanded me to do in John chapter 20. I get to deliver his forgiveness, which reminds us that I'm not saved by any of the things I do. I'm not saved by being the perfect congregant, by being the perfect Christian, by putting on the costume of perfection. But I'm saved by Jesus, and he actually covers me, not with a costume, but with his very real righteousness. I belong because I'm a human being who needs grace. I believe And I'm saved by the grace of Jesus and this grace that he actually gives us through his imperfect church. And then finally, what they settle on as kind of an agreement is not that the law doesn't matter anymore, but that the law still actually makes a difference. Except they're under a different kind of law. It's not the Old Testament law that says we all have to kind of in these external actions look the same. But it's the new covenant law. And that new covenant law is what Jesus says, the new command I give you is to love one another as I have loved you. 
And he says this is actually the external action that people will recognize you as. They will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. And so that's what the people in Acts tell the disciples to do. We, and that's why we search the Scriptures today too. We search the Scriptures to know how to best love the people around me. The, the commandments there show me, give me a guideline for loving the people in my life. And back then in Acts chapter 15, they, they listed a few things here in verses 19 to 20 that said, look, there are some laws that actually apply that the Jewish people have held to and the Gentile people didn't really that do still matter. Lies about, or laws about sexual morality, these things continue to matter. And there are a few things that, that these Gentile people might have been doing in the past that are kind of like sticking a fork in the eye of the Jewish people because they're so offensive. And, and as we're learning to act in love, well, they can do things like abstain from blood of animals. They can do things like not eating the food sacrificed to idols because they are acting in Christian love towards their brothers who come from a different background. You see, in all of this, behavior does matter, but it only comes, it only comes after they have fully and completely belonged by being creatures of God who were created from the beginning and yet need grace. It, it only happens after they believe in this Jesus who has come and saved him, saved them by grace. And it only comes by the grace of the Holy Spirit filling them up and empowering them to actually behave according to the law. So today, on this Holy Trinity Sunday, I want to take a step back and just recognize the beauty of what God has done. As, as we confess that God the Father has created all things, we confess that He created me. He put me in this place for His purposes. I belong here. No matter where you come from, no matter where you have been, no matter how much you need that grace, you belong. We confess to what Jesus has done that is not about me, but I believe and receive the gifts that he is giving. And then we confess that this Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who fills me up with faith, actually gives the church and fills us with power to keep the law to love the people around me. And all of it is powered by grace. And all of it rests on our triune God who comes to us graciously every single day of our lives.